Hey everyone, it is Ostron here with a quick video update on my new Kinex ball machine at the Works Museum. So I've now been working on this new project for probably seven months now, and it's been going really well, although obviously quite a bit slower than I first anticipated. And the main reason that it's been taking so long is this new lift. And this lift right here took about four months just by itself to get working the way I wanted it to. So this is an automatic reversing cable-driven elevator lift, which stands 22 feet tall and carries on average one ball every five seconds. So balls cue at the bottom of the lift. They wait for an elevator to get down. They're automatically loaded. And they are brought all the way to the top of the machine here, where they are dumped out into a waiting area. A little regulator wheel here is letting one ball every five seconds get fed into the machine. And if the elevators are running at full capacity, there'll never be a gap in the balls that run through here. So I've gone through about 10 revisions so far on this gearbox. And I tried to make this all be powered off of official Kinex motors, but in the end I found that it was best to get a 24 volt geared motor, which has a lot more torque. And that really helped a lot. It allowed me to get the speed I needed and the ball throughput that I needed. The problem is though, it has so much torque that it just rips pieces apart if it encounters any resistance at all. So that is where all the rest of the problems with this gearbox came up. So you may notice all of the wires and lights and there's even this little OLED display down here. So this is a computer controlled lift. Um, I, I did try to make it completely mechanical and I had one revision that was almost working but it still broke down just a little bit too frequently. So this new computer controlled version is capable of self-monitoring and self-diagnosing and it will automatically shut itself off if any problems or jams are encountered. Since this machine is going to be running for eight hours a day, seven days a week, that's a really important feature to have. So you see the flashing LEDs on the structure here. Uh, those are hall sensors, which are detecting magnets that have been attached to gears on the input side near the motor, as well as the output side near the pulley. In between them, I have two banks of wind-up motors, and the torque from the motor is split between both of those banks. And those are there as a safety mechanism in case something stalls the output of the transmission. You can see here the computer is monitoring the RPM, the number of cycles, the average time per cycle, as well as the average slip. And the slip is the difference in rotational speed between the input and output. And that difference is taken into account by the wind-up motors. So watch what happens when I jam the transmission here. So that loud clicking you heard right there was the wind-up motors maxing out. And it just clicked through the springs and the wind-up motors instead of damaging any of the parts inside the transmission. The computer detected the difference in speed of the input and output halves of the transmission, and it automatically shut itself down, reversed for two seconds, and then continued onward, hopefully clearing the jam. If reversing the transmission does not clear the jam, it will simply shut itself off and wait to be fixed and reset. So far, the machine has five completed paths and you may recognize elements of some of them from my past machines. The helix and the alternating counterweights, as well as the giant loop from the ball machine at Brickmania. The large spiral and corrugated orange tubing from the old machine at the works. And of course, the giant spiral bowl, also from Brickmania. The giant Ferris wheel is the most recent addition to this ball machine. It's four and a half feet in diameter. All the balls end up in this large trough at the bottom of the machine. They're picked up by a short chain lift, which delivers them to the two waiting areas at the bottoms of each of the elevators. My immediate plans for this machine 
are to fill in the large vacant area by the staircase there. I'm working on a series of dueling and racing tracks that are going to fill that space and bring the balls back down to the bottom. So this machine is definitely coming together, albeit a little more slowly than I had hoped, but it should be finished within the next month or two. As for the total piece count right now, I really have no idea, but it's definitely over 100,000. I'm hoping to surpass the number of pieces at the machine at Brickmania and maybe even hit the 200,000 piece mark. All right, that's all for this update. I'll see you next time, whenever that may be. Thanks for watching.